Hey guys, right before the Super Bowl trailer dropped, I asked you all what you wanted to see from the new film, and a lot of you ended up getting your wish at seeing a better look at the Indoraptor. Now that you've seen it, I have another question that I'd like to ask. What do you think of the design and feel of the Indoraptor so far? I've posted a new poll for you guys to leave your thoughts, and I'm very curious to see how this one will go. Personally, I really like the imagery being used here, and the idea of this freakish monster being created reminds me heavily of some of the spoken dialogue and warnings that Michael Crichton wrote about in the original novel. The first book had a baby get attacked by compies at night, and I have somewhat of a suspicion that this may have been sort of a factor into the setup of this new scene. Well, that and the dinosaur in our backyard scene from The Lost World. Something tells me that this encounter won't be nearly as humorous, though. After the second trailer for Fallen Kingdom was released, a huge amount of information became available for the public to find and research via the Dinosaur Protection Group's website. I've been looking through it for a while now and found some very interesting things that I want to share with you all very soon. But before I go over all of that, I actually wanted to talk about the missing Mosasaur that's mentioned in the now hacked Jurassic World website. After taking over JurassicWorld.com, the DPG seems to have gotten hold of a lot of information surrounding the well-being of most of the dinosaurs. One creature that they have new information on in particular happens to be Jurassic World's Mosasaurus. Now, we all assumed that it would stay trapped in the Nublar Lagoon after the events of the last film, and in fact a lot of speculation was given as to how this massive animal would be able to survive without anyone being able to feed it on the island. But now, it seems that all of that speculation has become irrelevant, because the marine reptile isn't even present in its lagoon on the island as of the events of this new movie. In fact, the website goes on to state that the Mosasaurus feeding show has been destroyed, and the creature is free and unaccounted for in territorial waters meaning that the Mosasaurus actually somehow made its way out of the lagoon and into the ocean. I'm not sure what exactly this means for the new movie or whether or not we will get to see it during the scene where Owen, Claire, and Franklin take their dive off of Nublar's edge, but if we do, those dinosaurs are going to go out of the fire and into the frying pan if you know what I mean. The biggest question many seem to have about the Mosasaurus disappearance from Jurassic World is how the animal even got out of the lagoon in the first place. There doesn't seem to be any channels or small rivers that run through the lagoon itself, or at least none shown on the map, so the question as to how it escaped seems to be a very enticing one. Now before I go any further, I want to say that when I present something to you guys on this channel, I want to make sure that I have evidence that supports what I record and say. I try to be as objective as humanly possible on here and always like to stick to the facts and only speculate when the situation calls for it. And in my personal opinion, this is proving to be one of those situations. I'm not sure if its disappearance will even be addressed in the film, but if you're asking me personally, I would probably turn my attention away from questioning how the animal got out of containment and start wondering who could have let it out of its containment. Again, if we're just going by the map that's shown on the website, it's really difficult to find any sort of route the Mosasaur could take in swimming its way to any territorial waters. So someone moving it out of its enclosure seems to be the more probable question to ponder. The site makes it known that various illegal activities have taken place on Isla Nublar after 2015, and some rogue groups of people are actually claiming to having access to the park's cloning technology. As far as I'm concerned, it's not out of the realm of possibility to suspect that someone moved the Mosasaur out of the lagoon in an effort to save it from starvation. But again, this is all just speculation and should be treated as such. Jurassic Park maps are notorious for having numerous different versions that often contradict one another, and most of them are pretty devoid of any real topographical accuracy when concerning landmarks, animal fences, or other key locations. Now that being said, the Jurassic World maps have actually been super spot on as far as their depiction of areas that we get to see on screen. So there could be some smaller rivers or waterways that we are unaware about the animal may have used, but it could also have been given help in making its way off of the island. With the Mosasaurus out of its lagoon, yet still unaccounted for as far as the Dinosaur Protection Group goes, the creature's whereabouts are really hard to pinpoint. Personally, I think it would stalk the outskirts of the island and take advantage of anything getting closer than it should. This is a predatory reptile that was shown to eat pteranodons after they flew over its waters, and even attacked and killed the Indominus Rex towards the end of the movie. So now that the creature's free, I think it will have a pretty good chance of survival out in the open ocean. Whether or not the dinosaur capturing team has any plans of transporting it away from those waters is another question entirely. Although I will say, if they plan on doing so, I would love to see what elaborate way they come up with. Now, I actually want to ask you guys what you think about all of this. 
Do you think there might be some sort of waterway or channel that the Mosasaur used to get out of its lagoon that is unseen on the website? Or do you think that it may have had a little help in getting off of the island before it starved to death? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Now, before I go, I want to thank my new game wardens, Andrew Wilmot and Bledsitter, as well as my new engine executive, The Sandman. I also want to say thank you to all of my park workers and engine hunters. Corey Leidick and Why Your Band Fails, I really appreciate the support that you've shown to pledging to my Patreon, and I think it's awesome to have so many great people help me build this channel bigger and better than ever. With that being said, I want to take the time to thank you all for watching this video, and hope you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope you'll consider subscribing so that you can hear from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.